everybody, this is Judy. Um, today, um, in an African mode, and um, I'm going to talk about uh, unemployment. Um, what is causing unemployment in Africa? You know, you look through so many countries, you wonder what is it that is keeping our people not employed? And um, as I've been doing a lot of research on this topic, they definitely there's something that I see that is common. Africa is a rich country. Africa is the upcoming or the next big thing. But yet, when you look at unemployment, it's very high. And um, what is it that is causing um, the biggest unemployment in Africa? As I have looked through, talked to a lot of people, uh, different scenarios, there's something that seems to be coming that is common. Uh, what is the cause of unemployment in Africa that I found is dishonesty. Dishonesty is such a big issue that if you're an investor, you are totally afraid of investing in Africa. Most people get a job with a mission to steal uh, from the employer as much as possible by inflating invoices, recording less than the actual number of units produced um, from the employer. So the mission, a lot of people may have their degrees, their everything, but when they get a job, their mission is to steal from the employer as much as possible and not to work. That quick fix, that magic pill, how can I uh, have uh, two sets of receipts? How can I uh, keep um, one set for the employer, another for me, whatever cash we are collecting for it to go in my pocket? Uh, stealing is not by a single person. So you can't look at an organization and you say only one person in that organization is, st is stealing. One of the biggest problems is it's usually many staff collude with each other from production to sales to finance to even top management. Um, everybody there has something. In East Africa, they will say Nipe Kitu Kidogo, Kenya style. And that is not from the bottom, it's from the top going up. So if I, if you're an investor, you have a manufacturing plant there, and you are an investor, maybe living in another country, and um, you put your money there, um, it's going to be very difficult for you to retrieve your money because um, the stealing is across the board. So the people who are still have faith in Africa, what are they doing? What are they doing? What is the solution? Well, the solution for them is the few companies, the few manufacturing companies that are left in Africa, what they are doing is they are hiring expatriates. They are getting people from India because those Indians are honest. They are getting people from Chinese come in there they don't hire the African people. They bring people from China to work in their companies. And then we have um, Caucasian white expatriates, managers. Um, because one of the things they have, they're competent, they're honest, and they're straightforward. And that is something that we are lacking. And that is why any potential investor who would have put money in Africa is Putting the money in Africa, all right, but he's importing labor from other places to come and take our jobs. Uh, do I blame them? No, I don't blame them. Because if I was an investor and you don't make money out of your investment, you're definitely going to get really frustrated. So initially, one may think, oh, but the cost of visas and relocation is expensive. I need to get a visa for these expatriates. I need to get house staff for these expatriates. And uh, in, 
initially you may think that is expensive. But what research is finding out, even after you pay all that, when you calculate the number hiring a lot of the African staff and the amount of money they're going to steal from you, it is way cheaper to hire expatriate help than get the local people. That in itself, my friends, is a huge, huge problem where we steal so much from ourselves. Those factories are put there in place uh, so that we can um, so that we can get employed. Instead of getting your monthly salary and living off of what you have, you are trying to look for ways to um, fraudulently steal from your employer and that the company is going to collapse. Once the company collapses, it shuts down. So you have no job. Uh, so what I'm seeing a lot, and uh, in Kenya, there's this local bank, and they had a conference here in Los Angeles. I'm not going to say the name of the bank. And they came with their big management. And I was shocked. I was shocked. The top management was nothing but expatriates. Nothing, Americans, Indians, everybody who was not Kenyan was in the top management of this bank. And this is a Kenyan-owned bank. And I was so mad initially. I was like, how dare you? You send us to school to come to school, yet you can't hire us. So as I did more research, I see why they have to go this route. And now we Africans... Um, the only jobs we are left with, they are the non-sensitive positions that, you know, cleaning and all those little jobs that are not going to put you in a high level when you have these degrees. You have accounting degrees, finance degrees, and all this education, but because of the dishonesty, it's killing jobs and industry in Africa, and the people who are suffering the most are we, the Africans. Um, investors are afraid to invest in Africa for fear of losing the investment. And many companies have gone and been wiped down. Um, I remember seeing on Facebook uh, the other day, this was even a donation. This company was going to drill some water somewhere in East Africa. And... Um, and they had donated these um, big machines to drill. And when they arrived at the port, they wanted him to pay some bribe, some money to steal. And this guy was actually angry. It was a church. They were really mad. It's like, we're trying to help you, and you want to get some more money from us and steal this. But that is what I'm talking about, that even if you want to help, even if you want to invest, you find that it is very difficult. So most rich Africans are, are these Africans who are very, very wealthy, very rich. And you know what they're doing? They are taking the money and leaving it in stocks outside Africa. They have a bank accounts in Europe, in Switzerland, and um, in um, this island. I think everybody now is going to this island on the East African coast, um, they are going over to that island, um, seashells and um, one of those, you know, because um, they are able to hide their money there. So they would rather, instead of putting the money into factory, instead of keeping you at salary where you can earn 50,000, uh, whatever money you can earn um, a month, they would rather steal money from your country or get all the investments and put it outside just for it to hang in the bank, uh, getting a small percentage like in bonds or in stocks or whatever they are. Because they have tried putting factories and those factories collapse because they are people they have hired, the local people they have hired do nothing but still, you even start a chicken farm. This is how sad it is. 
you start a chicken farm and somebody will go out of their way to steal all the eggs. Now, when you start counting the eggs, they will go out of their way to, um, to kill the chicken so that uh, the owner can say, okay, go to per this one, go throw this chicken, and then they can take it home. Um, yet, they don't really sit down and say, this company, this employer is giving me a monthly salary that I can use to raise my kids. And with time, what happens? Uh, most of the factories do shut down. And then you are back to being on the streets. You are back to being unemployed. And you have nowhere to steal from. Honesty is a solution for growth on the African continent. I don't see any other solution. The only thing I think we need to do is really change our behavior um, and this, this is this disease. It's from the politicians to the high levels, including the low levels. I think it started on the higher level, professionals, the government, the politicians, every one of them. And then now it's moved down to even when you go to a clerk in a government office for them to print you your birth certificate, a copy that you are paying for, they want you to bribe them. They want you to give them extra money. And, 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 and some of them do collect money, but they don't put it in the port for the government. They don't pay the government to keep this money so it can self-sustain. Um, honesty is solution for growth on the African continent, my people. I don't know what else to say, but that is what I see. Competency is necessary, but right now, um, it, it's, you may have your degree, you may be educated in, in Makere, you may have gone to Nairobi University or University of Ibadan or whatever. You may have all those education, but without being honest, it's difficult for any investor to really keep you on a job. It is difficult to train a dishonest person to be honest, but it is easy to train someone without skills to learn the skill if they are honest. And with technology, um, most people can do anything if you train them to, so long as they have the basic education. So for us to really stop getting those expatriates coming through, uh, it would be good if we put trust in our investors so when somebody comes and they're putting a factory out, they can make money, they can sustain their factory. That mean, if they sustain their factory, that means you are employed. What has happened, and I have seen this myself, I have tried to take goods to Africa to sell. And when I'm there, I can make 10 times the money. But as soon as I leave, Oh my God, the stories you get is just unbelievable. Oh, this thing, I went here, somebody stole it. They, I, I took a camera to really help um, a lot of the media people produce some clips um, that we were doing. And the guy who I bought the camera for practically called me and told me that he was traveling from Kisumu to Nairobi and the camera was stolen. Unfortunately, I have a friend who works with the satellite mapping uh, thing. And when we looked at the number for the day, it did not record that person had traveled from Nairobi, from Kisumu to Nairobi. So practically that person stole the camera that was intended to loan to a lot of um, people who are recording so that they can be able to tell our stories um, without them spending high money in recording. So that just went sour. And um, so I have experienced some of that. Um, so when I'm there, when I'm there, you get the, you, you, you are excited because you see um, where the potential 
Is there potential in Africa? Absolutely. Africa is ripe. I, Africa is the next thing to happen in industrialization. And the world is looking at it. And Chinese are coming in millions. Everybody's coming. It's like a second scramble for Africa. Unfortunately, they're coming with their people. The reason why they're coming with their people because our people put an effort to do nothing but to steal everything from the investor. And the investors are there for nothing but to make a profit. There's a big price to pay for dishonesty, Africa. There's a huge, huge price to pay. And that means there's going to be job loss. Job lost among our people. The expatriates will continuously, continuously come through. And as they come through, uh, we are going to face homelessness. Um, before, we used to say, uh, just go to school, get your degree, and you will get a good job. And I think a good number of people on the continent have done that, really gone to school, and most of them have degrees. But the thing that is now missing is the jobs. The jobs are missing because the investors are very unhappy. They cannot get a return on their investments. Not because there are no returns. The returns are coming, but people are stealing and stealing from the investor to where the people who still have guts to invest in Africa, including the Africans themselves, Dangote and the rest, what they are doing is they are, um, they are bringing in expatriates to run their businesses. And I know if you had to do one-on-one -on -one sitting with them and you had to be honest with them, uh, they will tell you, I want, to, I want to employ my people, but I can't trust my own people. So if they bring an Indian from India, they will do the job. Um, right now, like with technology, with, um, there are so many jobs on Internet. I see a lot of people in Europe, in America, using um, labor force from India without really having them to migrate. We could do that, but there will be somebody who is trying to steal the information, sell the information, or steal from that account that an employer couldn't trust them with. Um, all those kind of things are not things that are going to attract anybody to put their money on the continent of Africa. And if they do, they're going to bring their employers with them. Be honest so that we can keep the investors coming. And this means even the investors among ourselves. We have politicians, we have presidents that have a lot of money, yet they don't invest in Africa. They take their money and take it out of the country. Why? Because although they may have stolen the money or earned the money, they are afraid of putting that money in factories because somebody else will be trying to steal from them. So they would rather get $2 return on their little money than put it in factory to make millions. Because the truth is, if you think you're going to make those millions, and people, employers, the employees are stealing from you, then by the end of the day, you will have nothing, nothing left for you to have. Uh, thank you so much. Until next time, Judy, um, with ATLE TV. Um, thank you.